The ancient Greek language includes the forms of Greek used in ancient Greece and the ancient world from around the 9th century BCE to the 6th century CE. It is often roughly divided into the Archaic period 9th to 6th centuries BCE, Classical period 5th and 4th centuries BCE, and Hellenistic period Coine Greek, 3rd century BCE to the 4th century CE. It is antedated in the 2nd millennium BCE by Mycenaean Greek and succeeded by Medieval Greek. Coin is regarded as a separate historical stage of its own, although in its earliest form it closely resembled Attic Greek and in its latest form it approaches Medieval Greek. Prior to the Coin period, Greek of the Classic and earlier periods included several regional dialects. Ancient Greek was the language of Homer and of 5th century Athenian historians, playwrights, and philosophers. It has contributed many words to English vocabulary and has been a standard subject of study in educational institutions of the Western world since the Renaissance. This article primarily contains information about the epic and classical periods of the language. Dialects <inaudible> 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 Ancient Greek was a pluricentric language, divided into many dialects. The main dialect groups are Attic and Ionic, Aeolic, Arcadocypriot, and Doric, many of them with several subdivisions. Some dialects are found in standardized literary forms used in literature, while others are attested only in inscriptions. There are also several historical forms. Homeric Greek is a literary form of Archaic Greek derived primarily from Ionic and Aeolic used in the epic poems, the Iliad and Odyssey, and in later poems by other authors. Homeric Greek had significant differences in grammar and pronunciation from classical Attic and other classical era dialects. History The origins, early form and development of the Hellenic language family are not well understood because of a lack of contemporaneous evidence. Several theories exist about what Hellenic dialect groups may have existed between the divergence of early Greek-like speech from the common Proto-Indo-European language and the Classical period. They have the same general outline, but differ in some of the detail. The only attested dialect from this period is Mycenaean Greek, but its relationship to the historical dialects and the historical circumstances of the times imply that the overall groups already existed in some form. Scholars assume that major ancient Greek period dialect groups developed not later than 1120 BCE, at the time of the Dorian invasions—and that their first appearances as precise alphabetic writing began in the 8th century BCE. The invasion would not be Dorian unless the invaders had some cultural relationship to the historical Dorians. The invasion is known to have displaced population to the later Attic Ionic regions, who regarded themselves as descendants of the population displaced by or contending with the Dorians. The Greeks of this period believed there were three major divisions of all Greek people. Dorians, Aeolians, and Ionians including Athenians, each with their own defining and distinctive dialects. Allowing for their oversight of Arcadian, an obscure mountain dialect, and Cypriot, far from the center of Greek scholarship, this division of people and language is quite similar to the results of modern archaeological linguistic investigation. One standard formulation for the dialects is West versus non-West Greek is the strongest marked and earliest division, with non-West in subsets of Ionic Attic or Attic Ionic and Aeolic versus Arcadocypriot, or Aeolic and Arcadocypriot versus Ionic Attic. Often non-West is called East Greek. Arcadocypriot apparently descended more closely from the Mycenaean Greek of the Bronze Age. Boeotian had come under a strong Northwest Greek influence, and can in some respects be considered a transitional dialect. Thessalian likewise had come under Northwest Greek influence, though to a lesser degree. Pamphylian Greek, spoken in a small area on the southwestern coast of Anatolia and little preserved in inscriptions, may be either a fifth major dialect group, or it is Mycenaean Greek overlaid by Doric, with a non-Greek native influence. Most of the dialect subgroups listed above had further subdivisions, generally equivalent to a city-state and its surrounding territory, or to an island. Doric notably had several intermediate divisions as well, into island Doric including Cretan Doric, southern Peloponnesus Doric including Laconian, the dialect of Sparta, and northern Peloponnesus Doric including Corinthian. The lesbian dialect was Aeolic Greek. 
All the groups were represented by colonies beyond Greece proper as well, and these colonies generally developed local characteristics, often under the influence of settlers or neighbors speaking different Greek dialects. The dialects outside the Ionic group are known mainly from inscriptions, notable exceptions being fragments of the works of the poet Sappho from the island of Lesbos, in Aeolian, and the poems of the Boeotian poet Pindar and other lyric poets, usually in Doric, after the conquests of Alexander the Great in the late 4th century BCE, a new international dialect known as Koine or Common Greek developed, largely based on Attic Greek, but with influence from other dialects. This dialect slowly replaced most of the older dialects, although Doric dialect has survived in the Siconian language, which is spoken in the region of modern Sparta. Doric has also passed down its aorist terminations into most verbs of Demotic Greek. By about the 6th century CE, the coin had slowly metamorphosed into medieval Greek. <laughs> <laughs> Related languages or dialects Ancient Macedonian was an Indo-European language at least closely related to Greek, but its exact relationship is unclear because of insufficient data, possibly a dialect of Greek, a sibling language to Greek, or a close cousin to Greek, and perhaps related to some extent, to Thracian and Phrygian languages. The Macedonian dialect or language appears to have been supplanted by Attic Greek in the Hellenistic period. Recent epigraphic discoveries in the Greek region of Macedonia, such as the Pella Curse Tablet, suggest that ancient Macedonian might have been a variety of northwestern ancient Greek. Topic: Phonology. Topic: Differences from Proto-Indo-European. Ancient Greek differs from Proto-Indo-European and other Indo-European languages in certain ways. In phonotactics, ancient Greek words could end only in a vowel or nsr. Final stops were lost, as in gala milk, compared with galactose of milk genitive. Ancient Greek of the Classical period also differed in phonemic inventory. Pi asterisk s became h at the beginning of a word. Debuccalization. Latin sex. English six. Ancient Greek hey x. Pi asterisk s was alighted between vowels after an intermediate step of debuccalization. Sanskrit genosis. Latin generis. Where s greater than r by rhoticism. Greek asterisk genesos greater than asterisk genohos greater than ancient Greek genios per gram anios. Attic genus per gram ano s of a kind. Pi asterisk y, j, became, h, debuccalization, or, d, z, fortition, Sanskrit yas, ancient Greek hos, hos, who, relative pronoun, Latin iugum, English yoke, ancient Greek zygos, zygos. Pi asterisk w, which occurred in Mycenaean and some non Attic dialects, was lost, early Doric ergon, virgin, English work, Attic Greek ergon, ergon. Pi and Mycenaean labiavelars changed to plain stops labials, dentals, and velars in the later Greek dialects, for instance, pi asterisk k became, p, or, t, in Attic, Attic Greek pu, po circumflex, where, Latin quo, Attic Greek tis, tis, Latin keys, who? Pi, voiced aspirated. Stops asterisk bdgg were devoiced and became the aspirated stops phi theta chi, ptk, in ancient Greek. Topic. Phonemic inventory The pronunciation of Ancient Greek was very different from that of Modern Greek. Ancient Greek had long and short vowels, many diphthongs, double and single consonants, voiced, voiceless, and aspirated stops, and a pitch accent. In Modern Greek, all vowels and consonants are short. Many vowels and diphthongs once pronounced distinctly are pronounced as i, ioticism. Some of the stops and glides in diphthongs have become fricatives, and the pitch accent has changed to a stress accent. Many of the changes took place in the Koine Greek period. The writing system of modern Greek, however, does not reflect all pronunciation changes. The examples below represent Attic Greek in the 5th century BCE. Ancient pronunciation cannot be reconstructed with certainty, but Greek from the period is well documented, and there is little disagreement among linguists as to the general nature of the sounds that the letters represent. Topic. Consonants Occurred as an allophone of n, that was used before velars and as an allophone of before nasals. 
R was probably voiceless when word initial written rach. S was assimilated to Z before voiced consonants. Topic: Vowels. O raised to U probably by the 4th century BCE. Topic: Morphology. Greek, like all of the older Indo-European languages, is highly inflected. It is highly archaic in its preservation of Proto-Indo-European forms. In ancient Greek, nouns including proper nouns have five cases nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and vocative, three genders masculine, feminine, and neuter, and three numbers singular, dual, and plural. Verbs have four moods indicative, imperative, subjunctive, and optative and three voices active, middle, and passive, as well as three persons first, second, and third and various other forms. Verbs are conjugated through seven combinations of tenses and aspect generally simply called tenses. The present, future, and imperfect are imperfective in aspect, the aorist perfective aspect, a present perfect, pluperfect and future perfect. Most tenses display all four moods and three voices, although there is no future subjunctive or imperative. Also, there is no imperfect subjunctive, optative or imperative. The infinitives and participles correspond to the finite combinations of tense, aspect, and voice. Topic. Augment The indicative of past tenses adds conceptually, at least, a prefix, e, called the augment. This was probably originally a separate word, meaning something like, then, added because tenses in pi had primarily aspectual meaning. The augment is added to the indicative of the aorist, imperfect, and pluperfect, but not to any of the other forms of the aorist no other forms of the imperfect and pluperfect exist. The two kinds of augment in Greek are syllabic and quantitative. The syllabic augment is added to stems beginning with consonants, and simply prefixes e stems beginning with r, however, add er. The quantitative augment is added to stems beginning with vowels, and involves lengthening the vowel a, a, e, 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 I, 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 O, 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 U, 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 U I, A, 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 or A, Oi, Oi, O, U, or O, E, U, U, or E, U, O, 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 some verbs augment irregularly, the most common variation is E, A. The irregularity can be explained diachronically by the loss of S between vowels. In verbs with a preposition as a prefix, the augment is placed not at the start of the word, but between the preposition and the original verb. For example, pros balo I attack goes to prosible o nu in the aorist. However compound verbs consisting of a prefix that is not a preposition retain the augment at the start of the word, auto molo goes to itomolesa in the aorist. Following Homer's practice, the augment is sometimes not made in poetry, especially epic poetry. The augment sometimes substitutes for reduplication, see below. Topic. Reduplication Almost all forms of the perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect reduplicate the initial syllable of the verb stem. Note that a few irregular forms of perfect do not reduplicate, whereas a handful of irregular aorists reduplicate. The three types of reduplication are Syllabic reduplication, most verbs beginning with a single consonant, or a cluster of a stop with a sonorant, add a syllable consisting of the initial consonant followed by e. An aspirated consonant, however, reduplicates in its unaspirated equivalent, Grassmann's law. Augment, verbs beginning with a vowel, as well as those beginning with a cluster other than those indicated previously and occasionally for a few other verbs reduplicate in the same fashion as the augment. This remains in all forms of the perfect, not just the indicative. Attic reduplication, some verbs beginning with an a, e or o, followed by a sonorant or occasionally d or g, reduplicate by adding a syllable consisting of the initial vowel and following consonant, and lengthening the following vowel. Hence er er er, an anon, ol ol ol, ed ed ed. This is not actually specific to Attic Greek, despite its name, but it was generalized in Attic. This originally involved reduplicating a cluster consisting of a laryngeal and sonorant, hence hlh lay l ol with normal Greek development of laryngeals, forms with a stop were analogous, irregular duplication can be understood diachronically. 
For example, Lambano root lab has the perfect stem ilifa, not asterisk lelefa, because it was originally slambano with perfect seslifa, becoming ilifa through compensatory lengthening. Reduplication is also visible in the present tense stems of certain verbs. These stems add a syllable consisting of the root's initial consonant followed by i. A nasal stop appears after the reduplication in some verbs. Topic: <laughs> Writing system. The earliest extant examples of ancient Greek writing circa 1450 BCE are in the syllabic script Linear B beginning in the 8th century BCE, however, the Greek alphabet became standard, albeit with some variation among dialects. Early texts are written in Boustrophedon style, but left to right became standard during the Classic period. Modern editions of ancient Greek texts are usually written with accents and breathing marks, interword spacing, modern punctuation, and sometimes mixed case, but these were all introduced later. <laughs> Sample texts The beginning of Homer's Iliad exemplifies the archaic period of ancient Greek see Homeric Greek for more details, the beginning of Apology by Plato exemplifies Attic Greek from the Classical period of Ancient Greek Hodi men hymes o andres athenoioi peponthate hypo ton emon kategorin oak oida ego delta aun kai autos hype oton oligo emoto epilathem and huto pithanos elegant kaitoi alathes gay hos epos ipon odin erikasin using the IPA Hodi men hi me circumflex s, andres at na i circumflex i, oi, papon eight, hypo tn m cat or n, u k o i circumflex da e acute du circumflex chi, o, t o s, h y p o, t n o l u e m a u, t u circumflex, epilet om n, h t pit and s alien ka i acute toy, al t s e, h s epos e p e circumflex n, u den e r ka sin transliterated into the Latin alphabet using a modern version of the Erasmian scheme. Hodi men humes, o andres athenoioi, peponthate hupo ton emon kategorin, oak oida, ego d, aun kai autos hup, oton oligo emito epilathemon, huto pithanos alegon. Kaitoi alathes ge hos epos ipon odin erikasin, translated into English. How you, men of Athens, are feeling under the power of my accusers, I do not know, actually, even I myself almost forgot who I was because of them, they spoke so persuasively. And yet, loosely speaking, nothing they have said is true. Topic. Modern use The study of ancient Greek in European countries in addition to Latin occupied an important place in the syllabus from the Renaissance until the beginning of the 20th century. Ancient Greek is still taught as a compulsory or optional subject especially at traditional or elite schools throughout Europe, such as public schools and grammar schools in the United Kingdom. It is compulsory in the Liceo Classico in Italy, in the Gymnasium in the Netherlands, in some classes in Austria, in Croatia in Klasikna Gymnasija, in classical studies in ASO in Belgium and it is optional in the Humanistisches Gymnasium in Germany usually as a third language after Latin and English, from the age of 14 to 18. In 2006–07, 15,000 pupils studied ancient Greek in Germany according to the Federal Statistical Office of Germany, and 280,000 pupils studied it in Italy. It is a compulsory subject alongside Latin in the humanities branch of Spanish Bacchillerato. Ancient Greek is also taught at most major universities worldwide, often combined with Latin as part of classics. It will also be taught in state primary schools in the UK, to boost children's language skills, and will be offered as a foreign language to pupils in all primary schools from 2014 as part of a major drive to boost education standards, together with Latin, Mandarin, French, German, Spanish, and Italian. Ancient Greek is also taught as a compulsory subject in all gymnasiums and lyceums in Greece. Modern authors rarely write in ancient Greek, though Jan Kresadlo wrote some poetry and prose in the language, and Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and some volumes of Asterix have been translated into ancient Greek. Onomata kea kaiasmana onomata kechiasmina is the first magazine of crosswords and puzzles in ancient Greek. Its first issue appeared in April 2015 as an annex to Hebdomata Enigmatum. 
Alfred Rolfs included a preface, a short history of the Septuagint text, and other front matter translated into ancient Greek in his 1935 edition of the Septuagint. Robert Hanhart also included the introductory remarks to the 2006 revised Rolfs Hanhart edition in the language as well. Ancient Greek is also used by organizations and individuals, mainly Greek, who wish to denote their respect, admiration, or preference for the use of this language. This use is sometimes considered graphical, nationalistic, or funny. In any case, the fact that modern Greeks can still wholly or partly understand texts written in non-archaic forms of ancient Greek shows the affinity of modern Greek language to its ancestral predecessor, an isolated community near Trabzon, Turkey, an area where Pontic Greek is spoken, has been found to speak a variety of Greek that has parallels, both structurally and in its vocabulary, to ancient Greek not present in other varieties. As few as 5,000 people speak the dialect, and linguists believe that it is the closest living language to ancient Greek. Ancient Greek is often used in the coinage of modern technical terms in the European languages, see English words of Greek origin. Latinized forms of ancient Greek roots are used in many of the scientific names of species and in scientific terminology. Topic see also topic References topic Further reading Adams, Matthew. The Introduction of Greek into English Schools, Greece and Rome 61.1, 102 to 13, 2014. Allen, Rutger J. Changing the Topic, Topic Position in Ancient Greek Word Order, Nemozine, Bibliotheca Classica Batava 67.2, 181 to 213, 2014. Athenas, An Introduction to Ancient Greek, Oxford University Press. A series of textbooks on ancient Greek published for school use, Bakker, Egbert J., ed. A Companion to the Ancient Greek Language. Oxford, Wiley Blackwell, 2010. Beekes, Robert S. P. Etymological Dictionary of Greek. Leiden, The Netherlands, Brill, 2010. Chantrain, Pierre. Dictionnaire Etymologique de la Langue Grecque, New and Updated EDN, edited by Jean Taylardet, Olivier Masson, and Jean-Louis Perpillou, 3 vols. Paris, Klinksy, 2009 First EDN. 1968-1980. Christidis, Anastasios Phoebus, ed. A History of Ancient Greek, From the Beginnings to Late Antiquity. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 2007. Easterling, P. and Handley, See Greek Scripts, An Illustrated Introduction. London, Society for the Promotion of Hellenic Studies, 2001. ISBN 0-902984-17-9 Fortson, Benjamin W. Indo-European Language and Culture, An Introduction, 2D ed. Oxford, Wiley Blackwell, 2010. Hansen, Hardy and Quinn, Gerald M. 1992 Greek, An Intensive Course, Fordham University Press Horrocks, Jeffrey. Greek, A History of the Language and Its Speakers, 2D ed. Oxford, Wiley Blackwell, 2010. Janko, Richard. The Origins and Evolution of the Epic Diction, in the Iliad, a Commentary. Volume 4, Books 13-16. Edited by Richard Janko, 8-19. Cambridge, UK, Cambridge Univ. Press, 1992. Geoffrey, Lillian Hamilton. The Local Scripts of Archaic Greece, Revised Edition with a Supplement by A. W. Johnston. Oxford, Oxford Univ. Press, 1990. Morpurgo Davies, Anna, and Eve Duhu, eds. A Companion to Linear B, Mycenaean Greek Texts and Their World. Volume 1. Louvain, Belgium, Peters, 2008. Swiggers, Pierre and Alphonse Wouters. Description of the Constituent Elements of the Greek Language. In Brill's Companion to Ancient Greek Scholarship. Edited by Franco Montanari and Stefanos Matthaios, 757-797. Leiden, Brill, 2015. Topic external links Classical Greek Lessons free online through the Linguistics Research Center at UT Austin online Greek resources, dictionaries, grammar, virtual libraries, fonts, etc. Alfios, combines LSJ, Outenriath, Smites grammar and inflection tables in a browser add-on for use on any website Ancient Greek Basic Lexicon at the Global Lexicostatistical Database Ancient Greek Swadesh list of basic vocabulary words from Wiktionary's Swadesh list appendix. Greek language. Encyclopædia Britannica, 11th ed., 1911. Slavonic online editor for ancient Greek. Topic: <laughs> Grammar learning. A more extensive grammar of the ancient Greek language written by J. Rietveld. 
Recitation of classics books Perseus Greek dictionaries Greek language Com. Information on the history of the Greek language, application of modern linguistics to the study of Greek, and tools for learning Greek Free lessons in ancient Greek, bilingual libraries, forum A critical survey of websites devoted to ancient Greek Ancient Greek tutorials, Berkeley Language Center of the University of California A digital tutorial for ancient Greek based on White's first Greek book New Testament Greek Acropolis World News, a summary of the latest world news in ancient Greek, Juan Koderch, University of St. Andrews Topic. Classical texts Perseus, Greek and Roman materials Ancient Greek texts <laughs>